Hey everyone, you're listening to Ankur Variku on Voice with Variku. On this podcast, I talk to you about entrepreneurship, how to grow in life, manage personal finances, handle failures, and a lot more things that just come to my mind. The episode begins. This episode is a repeat of a newsletter edition that I had sent some time back, which was received very really well. And I thought I will add some voice and thus some emotions to what I had shared over a text format. The truth is that irrespective of how good a job we do or how diligently we do it, we are invariably going to bump into someone that doesn't agree with us, doesn't agree with our point of view or how we have done something or our suggestion, whatever the case may be. And unfortunately, we are not trained on how to handle disagreements. So in the absence of such training, we rely on our basic instincts. And unfortunately, those basic instincts don't help. Because what do our basic instincts tell us? Something that's not smart. Our brains over millions of years have evolved to do one thing really well, and that is to guard us against danger. An earlier danger was in the form of wild animals or erratic weather or a jealous tribe member. But that form of danger doesn't exist as much anymore. The brain, though, has remained the same. Its job has remained the same. And that is to warn us of danger and get us to act. So today, when someone disagrees with us, our basic instincts are telling us that we are in danger. We are being told that these people who are disagreeing with us, they are trying to threaten us, weaken us, confront us, argue with us, hurt us. And since we have hardly had any learning on how to handle disagreements, our brain does what comes naturally to us. We react and we try to hurt back. So it's like Ankur says, I think people should do XXX. And there's some random person online who says, hey, Bakwas advice, what a fake person you are, dude. Get out of here. And Ankur who's not trained on handling disagreements is like, you are fake. Your family is fake. Your entire world is fake. We, we've been in this situation, haven't we? We don't know any better. So what we do is we react. But here is something that helps me in trying to understand disagreements. And it's a framework. It's a framework that I call the pyramid of disagreements, which has seven levels of disagreement. And I will now go about describing these seven levels and then share what is my model when it comes to handling disagreements. The first level, which is the most fundamental one, is called name calling. And this sounds something like, you are fake. That's it. That's what the person is doing. They are disagreeing with us, but by calling us names. So they're calling us an idiot. They're calling us dumb. They're calling us whatever they want to. And they're abusing us, trolling us. And that is name calling. The second level of disagreement is something called ad hominem. Ad hominem. And that is when the person who's disagreeing with us, he attacks our authority without addressing the argument. So he'll say, Something to me, which will be to the extent of, have you ever even built a unicorn, dude? Like, have you even invested in your real life, dude? Like, have you even run a successful company, dude? Like, have you even been to an IIT, dude? So what they will do is that they will attack my authority. They will attack the authority of the person that they're trying to disagree with without addressing the argument. The third level is called responding to tone. In there, they criticize the tone of the writing without addressing the argument. So they'll be like, oh my God, this is so rude. Oh my God, this is so patronizing. Oh my God, look at yourself. How can you say that? What they're essentially doing is they're not name calling. They're not questioning our authority. They're just questioning the tone and criticizing the tone of how we are sharing what we are saying. The next one is contradiction. And that's level four disagreement. Contradiction is when they state the exact opposite of what we are trying to suggest, but with zero evidence that they provide. So it's something like, I'll say, hey, in your 20s, you should go about exploring and not settling. And someone will say, no, I think you should settle because that's the right thing to do. That's it, right? There's, there's nothing that they've done. They have just offered an opposing case. They have contradicted what I have said, but it is with zero evidence. The next level, which is level five of disagreement, it's what called counter argument. And in this case, they contradict and then they back it up with evidence. That still doesn't 
address what I'm trying to say. What they are doing is simply contradicting me and backing it up with evidence. So using the same example, I'll be like, hey, in your 20s, you should explore and not settle. And someone will say, no, you should settle because if you don't, you'll get old and you will not get any opportunities. That doesn't appreciate and understand where I'm coming from when I say you should explore and not settle. Number six is what's called refutation. In this case, they find the mistake and explain why there is a mistake using quotes. So what they will do is they'll poke mistakes in what the person is trying to say. And then just using quotes or some nice happy things, they will explain why it's mistaken. For example, in the same case, you should explore and not settle in your 20s. And someone will be like, oh, if you don't settle in your 20s, then you'll go old. Look at Ayush who couldn't find a job because he went exploring and now is without a job at age 31 and has no income. What did they do? They basically went about sharing an anecdote, using a quote and finding a mistake in what I did. And finally, level seven of disagreement is refuting the central point. So someone explicitly goes about refuting the central point that one is trying to make. So if I say you should explore and not settle in your 20s, they'll be like, hey, in the country like India, if you were to explore, our education system is not structured to facilitate that. Our unfortunately hiring system is not supportive of it. So if I find myself changing jobs frequently to go about exploring, it could be that I will not have something concrete to show as a specialization and that may make me unemployable. What do you think of that? This is when they have centered themselves on the point that I'm trying to make and then go about addressing that. This pyramid, when I first saw it, this was shared by a gentleman named Paul Graham on, on Twitter. He runs this fascinating company called Y Combinator. I, I was just blown away because I suddenly had a mechanism now to treat my disagreements. And here is what I do. If someone indulges in name calling or ad hominem, which is basically attacking me or attacking my authority, I don't react. As a principle, I just don't react. These are trolls. They are not worth my time and I'm not going to do anything for them. For responding to tone and contradiction, so someone is criticizing the tone of how I've written something or is contradicting what I'm trying to say but not offering any evidence, I simply acknowledge. My favorite acknowledgement is I understand, which is by the way so harmless that there is very little space for a reaction back and that is how I escape through that disagreement conflict. For counter-argument and refutation, I give it a patient hearing. Because this is my chance to hear and understand something that I may not know. I still reserve the right to reject, in which case I would simply say, I respect my point of view, I respect your point of view, but I do not agree. And that is hearing them out, giving them the ability to share themselves, and then also respectfully disagreeing if you don't see any value. And finally, Refuting the central point is where I bow down. This is when I acknowledge the new truth that I have uncovered. And these are the disagreements that I cherish the most. These are the ones which meaningfully move me forward and help me become a better, richer person than what I was before I heard this. And in life, there are so many such skills that are unfortunately never taught in school. Managing time, money, relationships, career, disagreements in this case. And I believe that handling disagreements is such a critical life skill that was completely missed out on when we were growing up. So I hope that this is useful and I hope that this allows you to reflect upon disagreements, not with this broad sweep reaction that we are all in some way incentivized to because our brains are structured in some way, but it is more nuanced. You understand why the disagreement is what it is and then you choose to react accordingly. All the best. Thank you for listening to this episode of Voice with Variku. To be notified of upcoming episodes, be sure to subscribe and follow the show on this app right now. Also, don't forget to rate and review the show because that just feels nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>